Good morning, Ecos. We are so excited to be with you another weekend. Guess what, guys? I want to introduce you to someone. He has been rocking with Ecos everywhere for a minute now. He is the founder of Promised Land Apparel. I want to introduce you to Louie. What is up, up Louie? How, How are you doing? doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. How has this year been for you? How has Ecos everywhere helped you out this year? Well, I mean, I guess this year has been different, right? Not yeah. just for me, but I'm sure for everybody that's watching as well. Um, things we have to adapt and and, um, you know, I think as a church, we've been preaching this message for so long of being outside of the four walls. And now we got a chance to do that. So me That's personally, real. I've enjoyed it. You know, um, being home with my kids and my, my family and stuff has uh, having Ecos everywhere has really made it easier for us. Yeah. And guess what? Did you know we are coming up on our one year anniversary of Ecos everywhere? That's so crazy. Right? One year. One year. But, you know, it's been exciting and to have this family has really been helpful to us throughout this pandemic. We want to invite you to celebrate with us. That means tell us how you Ecos Everywhere. Um, let us know your favorite worship set, your favorite worship song, your favorite sermon. You drop it in the comments, DM us. Over the next two to three weeks, we're going to be sharing those little throwbacks to get you back in the mood to remind you of the good times, okay? So we're leading up to that for Easter. And honestly, I mean, if you've been rocking with Ecos Everywhere for a while, it's going to be hard for you to choose those moments just because Seriously. they have such an amazing worship team and prophetic words. Speaking of, so, do you have a favorite? Uh, put me on the spot. Huh? <laughs> well, I'll tell I, you. I mean, honestly, I mean, I think my favorite moments are when Pastor Tim, Alan lead, they, you know, they're strong oh, leaders. Yeah. I mean, but there's really no weakness on that worship team, oh, honestly. I agree. So, but I do have, is it bad that I have a favorite now no, that you said I that? I think you're good. Mine is... Graves into Gardens, led by Josiah. Yeah, that's a good Yo, one. Yo, that dun 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 dun. <laughs> but there, there have been several times where uh, Baby Boy, I, we call him Baby Boy, but that's Alan for you guys that don't know. Um, he's led powerful. Oh, like, yeah. Powerful worship, you know, him and Naomi. Um, I, I think there's breakthrough when they when they lead worship yeah I, just, isn't that one of the songs yeah. that he no leads shade, to no shade to anybody on the worship no shade team. at all saying, we don't do shade here i'm we just don't saying do shade. alan and naomi are power, powerful yeah. powerful you know powerful. who does a great impression of alan singing breakthrough is sam sam manigal <laughs> yo i wish i had him here to show you that is it's it's spot on i ain't gonna do it because yeah I'm, i ain't got i ain't got the voice for it it's funny that you mentioned that that was one of your favorites because we are actually getting ready to head into worship with a little throwback of alan and naomi and pastor tim let's go let's, let's go excited. so you so know what that means get up get up right dance we dance every Sunday morning with our kids. Hey, they love it. Worship. I mean, holy dancing, maybe. I mean, that's what I was doing. Okay, okay. Keep calling me out like I that. All right. What is holy dancing? Uh, Wait, tell me what know. holy dancing is. I don't know. Was it not what I was just doing? I, get, I, mean, I was like worshiping the Lord, like, hey. <laughs> Well, you said, never mind. I was, yeah. You said throw it back, so I'm thinking. Oh, no. We're, throw <laughs> we're throwing back to a the different worship. worship I got you. I got yeah, you. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going into a we're throwback going into, worship You set. know what? We're going to go into worship right now because I think some of us need a little bit more of time in the presence. I just need some worship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll see you in there. Good morning. Welcome to Ecos Church. Would you join us in worship today? I was buried beneath my shame. It was my turn till I met. I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was.
Good morning, Ecos. Happy to be with you this morning. Blessings on you. Wow, what a week. Excited to hear the message and praise the Lord for what He's doing in us in our life. And we're just thankful to be here. So I just wanted to uh, give you a verse for today. Psalms 33 from 18 to 22. And it starts as, But the Lord watches over those who fear Him, those who rely on His unfailing love. He rescues them from death and He keeps them alive in times of famine. Amen. We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord, for our hope is in you alone. Amen, amen. I'm believing that with you this morning, and I wanted to tell you why we give to Ecos Church. We give because we want to grow the kingdom of God. We give because God has always got our back and He always is there for us and helping us through. And even though we're growing and we're learning and we're stretching and it hasn't been the year we wanted it to be, He's had our back this whole time and we've seen just the little things He's done to keep us going and, to, and give us hope and encouragement. And so we're praying for you too, as um, we know this is uncharted territory, but you know, God is faithful and, and He's always enough and He always makes a way for us. You know, you can give online three different ways, easy. We have the Venmo app, you can also do the cash app, and you can also give on ecoschurch.com. I wanna just pray for you right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your blessings and we thank you, Lord, that you're more than enough and you're our provision and you're our hope. And Father, we just ask for everyone in this body just to be encouraged and to be blessed and we know, Lord, you're gonna provide a way and you're gonna make a way for them. And so we speak provision over their life blessings over life, opportunities, and new uh, ventures and new business that's coming their way now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Have a great one.
stop, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop, you keep on making way in it. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You keep on making way. Time after time. Time after time. Think about it.
stepping right on time. You stepping right on time. You stepping right on time. You stepping right on time. Even when it looks like all my hope is gone. Even when it looks like all my strength is gone. Even when it looks like oh, all my options are gone. Hey, you keep on making way. You keep on making way. Hey, you keep on making way. You keep on making a way. Come on and sing it with me. You keep on making a way. You keep on making a way. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Keep on making a way. You keep on making. I can depend on you. Keep on making a way. You keep on making. Keep on making a way, you keep on making, yes you do, yeah, you keep on making, oh, yes you do, you keep, you keep on making a way, you keep on making a way, you keep on making a way. Excited to come to you in this way. It's yes. a new way. New way. It's I like a, this way. A new way for a new season. Hey. Uh, we wanted to talk to you from the scripture, from the word of God. We have started a new series called Stones and Storms. Stones. Say it with me. Stones, Stones and, and Storms. Storms. Put it in the comment, in fact. We want to drive it home because um, it's something that resonated in us as we begin to talk about really um, the journey that we all are called to walk on, walk with the Lord in. And actually, we can tell them how we really kind of stumbled on even the title. You were working on a message. Mm -hmm. And we're going to share some of that because that's really um, the bedrock of um, this series. And then while we were talking about it, it was like, wow. We should make a series out of it. We, sh we should make a series out of it. We, sh we should make a series out of it. actually go on a journey because I had received a word from the Lord we're gonna go back into the time of worship I mean if you've been keeping up with us on our social media platforms and you nice. watched last week's experience you know that it was just an unusual and a fresh um, mm -hmm. flow that hit he did something um, special last week. yeah he really did and so we're gonna go back into some more extended worship even from last week some portions you didn't get to see yet uh, and continue on in that atmosphere, believing God to really speak to your hearts and to set the captives free. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let's talk about this scripture in Joshua. Yes. I'm going to read the scripture so that you can know the actual context that started our whole conversation for Stones and Storms. So Joshua, the fourth chapter, from the first to the seventh verse. 
I'm going to read out of the NIV. It says this. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priest stood, and to carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the twelve men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. And if you look down in verse 21, it says the same thing, but it says it just a little bit different. It says, he said to the Israelites, in the future, when your descendants ask their parents, what do these stones mean? Tell them, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground, for the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. Ooh, stones. <clears throat> and storms. Those are some significant storm. stones. Okay, so why stones and storms? This has been, of course, Mm -hmm. One crazy season. <laughs> yes, it has. And I, I received the word of the Lord last week about the Father really being intentional to prepare us for the closing out of one season and the entering into a new season. In this time, there's been a lot of kind of um, pendulum swinging where there's been like exaggerations about how horrible life is and how bad it's been and how just how devastating it's been and how awful life has been. And then there's also been some minimizing that hasn't been healthy either. That's kind of been like, ah, it's not that bad, you're tripping, why are you on one, get over it, <laughs> right. you know, the whole nine. Mm -hmm. And really, neither two is healthy. Extremes. They're two extremes. Yeah. Um, they're the extreme of my life is falling apart. This is the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> like just everything is bad. Life is great. Let's just keep going as if everything was normal. Yeah. No, it's a real thing. Like living mm -hmm. through a pandemic. Never did that before. Check. Uh, but turns out <laughs> pretty, pretty real thing. Wasn't on the bucket um, list, but yeah. we can check it out. Right. Uh, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. It has real impact. Absolutely. And what we realize is, is that um, when we... Don't let the pendulum swing so hard from one to the other. We actually find out that there's space in our story and the reality of our lives is that there are, there's some of both of that in our lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So stones, tell stones. me about the significance of stones. What did God show you about the stones in, in what I just read? Well, he showed me that they had to pick the stones up from the middle of the dry ground in the middle of the Jordan. And they weren't, this is what got me, they weren't small stones. They weren't the kind of stones that you could fit in your pocket. They were actually large stones, the kind of the size and the weight that you actually would have to carry them on your shoulder to get to the other side. They were that kind of, oh, my mind pictures boulders. Like they were that kind of, they were big stones that they had to carry from the middle all the way to the other side and then set them down. And they each sat them down in their particular spot. And then Joshua came and put them as a memorial and built the memorial. 
Now they wanted to gather these stones to highlight the fact that God allowed them to cross mm -hmm. the Jordan. Mm -hmm. So it's like they have this massive miracle mm -hmm. and God is saying, don't treat this miracle like ordinary, right. but also I want you to put a memorial here, mm -hmm. not so that you worship the memorial, but so that you remember. It's a marker. It's a marker. A memorial for you to be able to pass on the information and the heritage and the legacy of what God did for you in that season, in the middle of the, the well, what we would call a storm. Yeah. It's like, this. So uh, when she began to share this to me, it leapt inside of me because it's so easy to forget about God's goodness mm -hmm. when you kind of get removed from it. Yeah. Like when time goes on and time has passed and God knowing, he was like, <laughs> y'all excited now that I let you cross this Jordan, mm -hmm. but let's face it. <laughs> in 10, 15 years, you're going to forget like, about this moment. the children of Israel in 10 to 15 minutes, <laughs> y'all going to forget this moment. And again, <laughs> they did evil in the sight of the Lord. <laughs> right, right. And so he says, I want you to actually mark this place as special. Mm -hmm. So the stones become a memorial that pass on a testimony. Right. So when you hear us reference stones in this series, we're talking about things that are markers of the testimony of God. And the, the power is in both the storm and the stone, the combination of the two. We often tell about the storm and forget the stones or we tell about the stones as a memorial but we forget to mention the actual storm so the power is in the combination of them both yeah because there's a what we found is that the stones will remind you that god gave you the victory but the storms tell the story mm -hmm. it's like i love that you got the victory but can you tell me the nuances of mm -hmm. your story yeah. Like, what was it like to get to the Jordan? And unlike with Moses, when he stretched forth his rod and the sea parted, the priest actually had to step into the water. Right. Could you imagine getting to the Jordan and saying, okay, just like Moses. Right. And, and nothing happens. God gives you a different set of instructions <laughs> yeah. than, than a season that you had already yeah. passed and you've already got those memorials for. And you need the story because now you know that you can come to a moment where you thought he would move the way he moved in the last season mm -hmm. and he actually is saying i want you to do something different mm -hmm. and you not feel like something is crazy like you're right. lacking faith like you know exactly. he's not with you could you imagine if they didn't if they didn't have the courage and joshua's instruction to keep taking steps mm -hmm. forward when you step in the water it's one thing to stand at the jordan and be like okay <laughs> heart right they sit there like and then it doesn't part and then I they have to put their foot in, mm -hmm. right? And then, it, and then it parts. So there's the stones that declare his good. Mm -hmm. It declares his faithfulness. It shows when he came through. Mm -hmm. Those are markers in our lives where we can say he did that and he did that and he did that. But we also have to be faithful to share the stories, which are the storms. Mm -hmm. because the stories are what's going to help. I'm sorry. The mm -hmm. stories are what's going to help other people get through theirs. Those are the practical points. The I sat in silence, I listened to the Lord. He told me to do this, the instructions, it's following the instructions. Those are the things that are gonna help people get through their particular storms and build their stories. Yeah, and so in this series of stones and storms, we actually want you to begin to think about what are some of the stones in your life? Because as you go through life, and you come through storms and you have the stones to prove and to mark God's faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Guess what you get to go into the next storm with when it comes? Those stones. You go into the next storm with the memory of those stones. Yeah. You go into the next storm with the, with the memory that God is faithful. Yes, you're building your history with him. Yeah. And those stones add up. And if you can think about it, they build this monument, this memorial, each stone big and weighty and tall, piled on top of each other. 
And you know when something is piled on top of each other, the higher it is, the further away from it you can see it. Mm -hmm. Like you can see it from a further distance, the higher it is. Yeah. So every time they're building on testimony after testimony yeah. after testimony of God's goodness, not yeah. only is it talking about their proximity, their ability to see it in proximity, mm -hmm. physical, spatial proximity, but even generationally. Mm -hmm. So they're saying this thing is so big that not only are you going to see it and testify of God's goodness, but your children's going to yeah. testify of God's goodness. And like she read in verse 21, maybe that not only that, but your children's children are going to speak up and have a testimony of God's goodness. You actually get to give your children stones to go into the storm. Mm -hmm. And then if you think about each tribe carried a stone. So each tribe had their own story on the way that they walk through the Jordan. Each tribe carried something. Each tribe had their own, well, we may have fallen on this side, but we got back up. We may have tripped over here, but we got back up. All 12, they had something different to contribute to the memorial of what they were passing on to the next generation. So even as we are ecos and everywhere, and I know we've got folks on the East Coast, the West Coast, we've got some folks in other nations, it's important that we tell our stories and our testimonies because as a community, mm -hmm. they built this monument yeah. to the Lord, right? As mm -hmm. a community, they saw, uh, well, we may, we may have never gone through that, but they did, mm -hmm. and God brought them out. Mm -hmm. And they've got a stone of God's goodness yeah. in the midst of that. And so we can lean on even your history, mm -hmm. your testimony. Because right. every time you testify, I think Bill Johnson says this, every time you testify, it's an, uh, it's an invitation for God to do it again. Mm -hmm. Every time you tell of how God healed you, it's an invitation for God to do it again. Mm -hmm. Every time you talk about an encounter that you had with God, it's an invitation for God to do it again. Every time you talk about God just bringing breakthrough and deliverance, it's an invitation for us to expect for the God who's no respective person and who never changes to do it again. Yeah. So we're going to pray for you right now, and then we're going to go back into some of the worship that we experienced last week some some of it that you have not experienced yet and even some of the prophetic flow i want you to prepare your hearts we want you to prepare your hearts i want you to take a moment and let's pray for the people as we go into this time of worship we want you to feast on the presence of god mm -hmm. and agree with heaven mm -hmm. agree with heaven come into alignment Thank in your Jesus. home and in your space that no matter what you're facing listen you may have some storms, but you got some stones. Yes. And don't go into your storm without no stones. Mm -hmm. Listen, leverage your history with God and watch God come through. Mm -hmm. All right? So would you take a moment and just pray for the folks? Lord, thank you for each and every person that is watching this stream. I pray now that you would show them the value of their storm and their stones and the combination of the power of it both. I pray now that you will give them the strength and the courage and the boldness and the bravery to embrace their seasons and the strength to carry their stones out of the storm to build the memorial, that they may be able to share it from generation to generation. In Jesus' name, amen. The next time the devil tries to punk you about how many storms you've been through, hit him with a stone. That's right. You tell him, I may have some storms, but I got some stones. Don't sleep on it. Come on, let's go into worship. The other day, I woke up to the smell of fresh paint and I saw the Lord painting a wall with a roller over black scuff marks. And I heard him say, what was once an eyesore or constant reminder of your past, you will see no more. You won't see yourself through the eyes of the past and neither will anyone else be able to see it or judge you by it. Then he highlighted, Joshua 5, 9, and it says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the place has been called Gilgal till this day. I believe today that he's giving you clean slates. We were just talking about preparing me. God, prepare me. Lord, prepare me. And he's preparing your slate, clean slates, blank slates, so that you 
can, he can write a new story. He can paint new pictures. He can decorate the way he wants. He can do what he wants on a clean slate. You are no longer tethered to your past. No one can hold you to your past. You are free today. You have clean slates today. You have blank slates to be and do everything that God has called you to do and to be. Walk free from today on. Oh, come on, just say, clean my slate, 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 clean my slate. Come on, come on, come on. Clean my slate, clean it, clean it, clean it, clean my slate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clean it, clean it, clean it, clean it, clean it, clean it, clean it. Pure and holy, tried and true. Pure and holy, tried and true. Oh, hallelujah. the pain of the past, the hurt of the past, rejection of the past, abandonment of the past. Oh, 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 oh clean my slate. Oh, Jesus. Woo. He's cleaning it, he's cleaning it, he's cleaning it, he's cleaning it, yeah, yeah. Woo. Give him glory, give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. Clean my slate. Oh, oh. My Jesus, my Jesus, my Jesus, my Jesus, my Jesus. Oh, clean my slate. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo. Come on, I dare you to thank him right now. Thank him right now. Thank him right now. Thank him, 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 thank him. Don't you bag another day. Thank him, just thank him. Shift into thank you. Shift into thanksgiving. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. He said he rolled back the reproach. He rolled back the reproach. He rolled back the reproach. He removed the reproach. He removed the reproach. Nobody knows. And I heard a door closing on false identities. Weights, shackles, chains that have held you to personalities and places that do not belong to the Lord. And he said to tell his children that he is burning them away by fire in the next 30 days. That his purifying fire will come to realign and reset you back into the identity that he chose for you before you were in your mother's womb. This fire will consume you. He is purifying the place and the identity that he already designed for you to walk freely and purely and wholly on this earth. You will hear slamming doors as you walk on your days. You will hear slamming doors in your sleep. You will hear slamming doors as you continue about the next 30 days of your life. And every time that happens, the Lord will reveal to you what he is removing, what he is purifying, what he is sharpening, what he is shaving off of you. As this days of deliverance are ahead of you, as you walk out, you will walk out boldly. You will walk out strong. You will walk out with clarity. You will walk out with a fire and passion to return to the one true home of the well that never runs dry. And so the Lord says, dig deep into me, sons. Dig deep into me, daughters. Dig deep into me, fathers. Dig deep into me, mothers. Uh, that's where you'll find the oil because the well that never runs dry will provide. It will provide and it will keep providing and it will keep providing and it will keep providing. And so we say fire, burn it away. Holy Ghost fire, come in and 
encounter in our hearts and our homes today. Come and encounter where we're riding in our cars. Come and encounter. Oh, come and encounter us, God. Come and burn it away, God. Uh, place us in the midst of the fire. Place us in the midst of your fire, God. We call for fire to rain down on us, God. Call for your fire to rain down on us, for you will place us in the fire, as it says in Isaiah, and we will come out shining like silver. We will come out purified like gold for your glory, God. And so we return the glory back to you, Lord. In this next 30 days, we slam the door to our own glory, but we submit ourselves at the altar. We lay down as a lamb today to say, burn it away. Burn all flesh away. Burn all flesh away. Burn all flesh away. Burn all flesh away. Burn it all away. And so I come against every mental torment right now that would come to remove you from the burning fire that purifies. I come against pride right now that would tell you this isn't for you. You don't need to change. My personality is my personality. Uh, even as it's speaking to you right now, we come and we say exit. You, we serve you an exit notice. Oh uh, yeah, we serve you an exit notice. Pride equals everywhere. Just take a deep breath and let it go. Take another deep breath and let it go. Pride, you must exit our family. Pride, you have no stance here. Pride, you must humble yourself and fall off. And so we say mental weights and bondages. Pride, come and out of the people right now in Jesus' name. For we send the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. For he died for all of it. He died for all of it every fleshly thing you must exit because the deliverer will purify you in the next 30 days with your yes so just begin to tell him yes yes Jesus yes Jesus yes Jesus yes Jesus oh yes yes I want your ways yes I want your heart Yes, I want you to purify my tongue. Yes, I want you to purify my mind. Yes, I want you to move it through me, but I want you to move me to where you want me to be, God. Yes, Jesus. 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 Yes, give him a yes today. We just got back from an incredible prophetic word and it just reminded me that if you missed last week's service, you can go back and watch that right now titled Lord Prepare Me with Pastor that was Tim. Such a, that was such a good word. I agree. Honestly, that was powerful. You know, once PT starts hitting it with the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh just, my goodness. Taking it back to Kojic times. Yep, yeah, that's, you know, it's, it's powerful. Yes. So that's the good thing about Ecos Everywhere. You got it on YouTube. It's been recorded. You could watch it over and over again. If Share you need a little pick me up, hey, click on any message. And I'm sure it'll encourage you for your if you've had a uh, rough week. Yeah. And just as we are coming back from that throwback worship set, remember our messages and our sermons are going to be fresh every week. And just a reminder, right. if you go on Instagram. If you guys enjoyed this worship set, the throwback, yes. um, make sure you guys check out our Instagram stories because there'll be a poll on there and you'll have an opportunity to vote what you want to hear next. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because oh. I know y'all stay on Instagram, so, you know. Are you calling them out? No, I'm, not, I'm just saying, like, that's what I do. I Come stay on Instagram. On. Listen, ain't no shame in being on Instagram. Especially it's, during this pandemic. They ain't not much I mean, going on, right? Yeah, I mean, true. Like, they could be getting the word on Instagram. Hopefully. <laughs> Look. I ain't judging you. Do you? Believe? No, I ain't judging y'all either. <laughs> I'm just, just saying. You know? He's just saying. That's always the line. I'm just saying. I ain't judging you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's anyway, anyway, before we get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Go on on, head over to Instagram Live. We are heading there with our pastors. Don't forget, share with a friend. Vote on what you want to hear next week, and we'll see you soon.